One of the nice features of Fantastic is that you can run an automatic test with just the click of a button. We push the Start Auto Test button, and it will collect all the data that we have just collected manually, but it'll do that automatically. So with the ASTM protocol, there are specific standards that must be followed when taking these data points. But now let's see what it looks like, so what Fantastic says the gauge should do when it's taking these points. Go into the settings of advanced options. And we can see that we're taking one bias pressure for 30 seconds, and that will be the same for the initial and the final bias pressure. And we're also taking six building pressures from 10 to 60 pascals for 10 seconds each. Now this is default to ASTM, so unless you are aware or unless you know what you're doing to make some changes, this can be used and your test should be valid. Okay. In order to make the connection between the DM2 and the computer, we'll first connect the mini USB plug to the DM2, like so, and then connect the other end of the cable to the USB port on the computer. And now we can turn our gauge on and we're ready to test. With the gauge now connected, we can begin updating the test sheet for the new test. First, we have to make sure we have the correct fan selected. And we have to select the r correct range. So to begin an automatic test, we select the button sele Start Auto Test. And this asked us if we wanted to start a new test. We say yes. And then it will ask if you want to close the fans or put a cover over the fan before taking a bias pressure. And we like to say yes to that as well. And again, make sure that we have the correct fan selected and the correct range selected. So now Fantastic is just looking at the rate of change in the room. If it's too high, it will not be able to take bias pressures. But we can see that it has just started. And it will collect readings based on the time that we selected to take bias pressure. And we have 30 seconds of a bias pressure. So we'll take readings for 30 30 to 35 seconds. Now as it's taking these readings, you can see that the bias pressure number is changing a little bit. And that's just because that's an average, so it's changing based on the readings that are being taken. And now we're seeking our first target pressure, which is 10 pascals. Now you can see on the right hand side, we have target pressure for the building gauge pressure, and we also have flow being recorded. And you'll notice that the blue column is in between 9 and 11, which is our range, our sensitivity range that is selected. And once it's in that range for a certain period of time, it's 30 seconds that it's set to now, then it will start collecting a data point. So we've collected our 10 Pascal data point, and now the program is seeking target pressure at 20. Now you can't hear it, but the fan is increasing in speed as we're going up in target pressures. And obviously this is to be expected. You'll notice as well on the right hand side the gauge for fan speed and the pressure change in Pascal per second. So you can see if there's too much wind or too much pressure change going on um, that might affect the test. And you can also see the fan speed increasing or decreasing depending on what target pressure you're attempting to reach. So if you see your fan speed increasing to such an extent that it's in the yellow mark or the red between 90 and 100 percent, then you'll know that you likely have to change your range plate. In this case though we're well below that and so we will be able to complete the whole test without changing a range. Sometimes depending on the surroundings and depending on the pressures that are occurring in the building and, the sur and surrounding the building, it might be difficult or it might take a bit of time to reach the target pressure that you're trying to achieve, but eventually your fan will be able to achieve that and it will remain at that pressure or that speed so you can maintain that target pressure for as much time as it takes to take the reading. Now we'll seal the fan up so that we can take the final bias pressure. The fan is now off and now it's looking for the stability of the pressure in the room or in the building.
Now it's likely negative because there's still a little bit of negative pressure generated from the fan as it was spooling down after being uh, up to 60 pascals. But you can see that number is slowly decreasing and we'll go into the positive soon. And that is the complete auto test. Now we'll click calculate. It has already calculated it, but sometimes you do have to click calculate. And you can see all the results from this auto test. So we have an air change rate of 8.2 in this building that we're testing. And if we look at the graph, we can see we have an excellent R squared value of 1. And you can see all the points that were taken, or all the readings that were taken along the top graph. Now we can include all the readings, or we can show just the averaged, one averaged point. So if we look at just the one averaged point, it's a much more simplified graph. Next we'll look into the semi-automatic testing feature.